Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan salam sejahtera everybody. A very warm welcome and thank you for being with us on this beautiful Saturday morning for this Wacana Warisan Series WWS Lecture. My name is Fadli Dres and I represent the Malay Heritage Foundation, MHF. Today marks the second session of the new WWS season. We would like to thank all our returning participants for their continued support. And for those new participants, uh, welcome to WWS. So uh, just to give, run through briefly what WWS is all about. It is a one of MHF flagship programs, comprises a series of webinars aimed to encourage the development of new approaches and alternatives towards the understanding of history, economics, politics, society, and culture. So this year, we have six different speakers delivering the webinars. We had Dr. Nazri as our guest speaker last month. And aside from today, uh, our speaker today, Dr. Rosalina Rawi. We also have Dr. Norida Kamari, Dr. Noh Hanisa, Dr. Amin Farid, and Mr. Said Hafiz. Certainly an exciting lineup of speakers for WWS 2022. So one interesting point to take note is that those who attend at least five sessions will be issued a certificate of attendance. Please note that only participants who register via the Zoom link before the session will be eligible for this cert. WWS webinars will be delivered in either Malay, Malay or English. And for today's session, it will be in English. So the webinar will be moderated by, our, by MHF Vice Chairman, Dr. Azai Ibrahim, who himself delivered all 12 WWS webinars last year, as some of you are very familiar with. So the topic for today, for today it will be on concept of heroes amongst Malay children in Singapore. Without further ado, let me now invite Dr. Azar to start the WWS session and introduce our guest speaker. Over to you, Dr. Azar. All right. Uh, thank you, Fadli. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for your time. And um, I think it's not too late to um, convey Selamat Hari Raya. Maaf Zahid Batin to all our Muslim friends. Yeah. Um, and of course, this is a very precious uh, Saturday morning when I'm sure uh, many of us are still in the Hari Raya mood with open house. Yeah. But we are also uh, very fortunate here, yeah? and I'm very delighted to have our uh, special speaker for this morning, yeah, Dr. Rosalina Rao. Yeah? Uh, Dr. Rosa, how are you? All Alhamdulillah, good? Alhamdulillah. Selamat Hari yeah. Raya, Dr. Azhar. Yeah, Selamat Hari Raya. Yeah? So, um, Dr. Rosa uh, is actually a lecturer at the ALC, Asian Languages and Cultures, at the National Institute of Education, or NIE, uh, NTU. Mm -hmm. um, um, she's, um, I would say, yeah, one of the uh, brilliant uh, young scholars yeah, coming up within yeah. the uh, Singapore uh, discourse on education, yeah, or in particular also on the... Um, Research on childhood education, right? Apart from assessment, um, Dr. Rosa um, um, is a recipient of the prestigious NIE Overseas Graduate Scholarship yeah, and completed her PhD in education at University of Cambridge. So we say that she is an educationist and an expert, a scholar on education. Uh, more so in specific terms, uh, in terms of assessment. Yeah? Uh, but of course, her, her studies and her research uh, goes beyond that. Yeah? And I think quite interesting that she wants to share something uh, this morning on uh, concept of heroes among Malay children in Singapore. As you may know, uh, within Malay studies discourse, uh, the, the concept of heroes have been uh, one of the most interesting topics, in fact, even polemical topics, yeah? As early as within the whole Romali studies, Kasim Muhammad venture on um, the concept of hero in Hikat Hang Tua, uh, followed by in the 80s, Sharuddin Maruf uh, on the, on the rethinking on the issue of uh, concept. But now it's very interesting where Dr. Rosa focus on Malay children. And this bring us, of course, uh, reading materials of children, teenagers, yeah, an area which I think uh, not many people have ventured into, right? More so, I think we have, you know, along the way when we build up Malay studies or we build up the discourse of Malay, I think uh, this domain has been uh, slightly neglected. And I'm glad a scholar like uh, Dr. Rosa 
come forward, yeah, look into this, and uh, I'm sure she can provide some critical insights for us. Yeah, to think critically, uh, deep, and I'm, I'm sure this is not just relevant for school, but also for public libraries, right? And even more importantly, for families, yeah? parents need to be also aware that how do we um, yeah, plan yeah, for our children's uh, reading and understanding and their needs. Yeah? All right, without further ado, I think let's hear from Dr. Rosa. And I'm very excited to know what is this. And I hope I'm surely be inspired by Dr. Dr. Rosa. I knew her all the way back at uh, NUS. I think she has been... Uh, uh, one that I would say I take pride eh, of what um, what Malaysia tumpang bangga. Eh, take pride of uh, what she has uh, accomplished today. All right, Dr. Rosa, um, the floor is yours. Please. Mashallah. Kasih banyak Maza. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rabbi israh li sadri wa yasir li amri wa hlul udatan min lisani yafkahu kauli. First of all, Selamat Hari Raya, maaf Zahid dan Batin to everybody uh, who is present here. Uh, if uh, Dr. Azha and uh, Fadli could allow me a few moments to please uh, honour some of the people that I see uh, watching. First and foremost, uh, to my parents, I think, who are watching in. Uh, to my parents who just came back from Kuala Lumpur and they are watching in this talk. Uh, I love you both so much. Uh, also, I think my teacher is present here. Prof. Uh, Hadija Rahmat is watching me on Facebook Live. And I also see here uh, a few of my students here. Yeah, MashaAllah, Ain Amirul. I see uh, Mariana here. MashaAllah, I even see Cikgu Sazali. Pak Amir Ismail is here. And uh, Cik Riz Sunawan. MashaAllah, Riz, our yeah. prayers for you. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Yeah, thank you so much for joining me this morning and I am so touched by your presence. Yeah? Uh, please um, allow me to, to begin also by uh, menyantuni uh, Dr. Azha uh, Ibrahim here, uh, whom I affectionately, I don't know, it's a, it's a matter of habit. I, I call him Abang Azha because he was my senior back in um, NUS, you know, and possibly the coolest and most swag senior that I had at the time and even till now, yeah, also so swag and always so cool. I remember uh, working with uh, Abang Azhar on a play, a drama, Tak Silap Saya, and he was teaching me how to shair and I was amazed at the many different types of shair that he knew to dendangkan and I, till now, to me, uh, Abang Azhar is someone that I really look up to in terms of the semangat and the spirit that he has Yeah, um, in pursuing uh, education, in advancing education. And I think, mashallah, uh, my doas that, uh, you know, Dr. Azhar is always preserved and may he, you know, be with us for a long time to come to share his wisdom and knowledge, mashallah. Yeah? Now, um, when Dr. Azhar approached me and asked me to share for this Wachana Warisan series, I actually told him that actually my area of speciality my, you know, my um, my expertise lies in assessment, penilaian, yeah. Tapi kalau nak, if I want to kongsi about penilaian, if I want to share about penilaian on a Saturday, on on a Saturday of the third week of Hari Raya, I think I might be talking to this plan behind me, yeah. So I told him, let's let's look at something that, uh, you know, I haven't touched on for quite some time, and it brought me to this uh, study that I did, yeah, and and a little bit of background on this title and the topic that I have here. This title is actually uh, has to do with something that I did almost a decade ago yeah and in 2011 I did my master's and I did this research on the concept of heroes amongst Malay, stud Malay students yeah and um, this paper I've only presented once ever and that was in 2011 yeah 2011 I think yes on the same year or either that or 2012 yeah but I've only presented it once and I've presented only in Penang once I've never shared it uh, ever in Singapore. So orang Singapore tak tahu who is the concept of heroes. Orang Penang tahu ya who is the concept of heroes amongst Malay students in Singapore. So I've not shared this. So I think it's a fantastic opportunity for me to revisit. And at the same time, although I have not you know like spoken about this, I do research with some young researchers with whom I will name and share in the next slide. But this is the background of today's sharing. I remember I did this as a critical inquiry research piece for uh, Prof. Adija Rahmat 
and also Prof Kamsia yeah uh, of course alhamdulillah I got an A for it I think I got an A also for some modules that I took under Dr Azhar that's that's how you know tekun I am as a student yeah mashallah and and I seek to do my teachers proud yeah so to my students who are here listening in yeah we always seek to make our teachers proud yeah that's that's our aim yeah because we want our our teachers our our parents to always be proud of what we are trying to achieve here in terms of our academic endeavors yeah so that's always my the passion behind a lot of what I do yeah I want to research on things which matter so one of the things that mattered to me at that point in time was this concept of heroes amongst Malay students yeah and this was also something that I brought with me from NUS I think sitting in a lecture under Prof Shahruddin Makruf and flinching because I was very uncomfortable with his talk on feudalism and his talk on the concept of heroes amongst the Malays so I brought it uh, as uh, you know I, I I brought it to my master's research and I I wanted to tackle the concept of heroes amongst Malay students so this was the study that I did and it involved about 86 of my secondary school students then and I did some surveys interviews and I asked them what is the concept of hero uh, amongst amongst them yeah and who do they consider to be a hero in the Malay community so um you know what what I seek to share today uh, would be uh, what the findings from this research but but also the findings from some other researchers young researchers who are uh, going into this field yeah so if you can see here the names of these three uh, three researchers here you have um Nor Farah Aina yeah she was one of my student in 2019 you can see what uh, Farah Aina uh, looked at here she looked at the concept of heroes in young Malay children and their identities yeah so i wanted to expand i i, I wanted to expand that look into the concept of heroes and see the link whether or not their heroes affect their learning identity so she did this research and i'm also going to share the results of her research yeah she did interviews with young children and then we also had uh, nurlain back in 2022 uh, i think ain is here today uh, thank you so much ain for allowing me to share your research uh, she did uh, a research on the impact of heroes on malay children's motivation she wanted to look at how can heroes motivate malay children to learn it's such an important question because we could use all the help we need when it comes to motivating kids to learn so she looked at that she looked at how can we use heroes to motivate our malay children to learn and the most current uh, student that i have currently looking into this uh, topic is uh, uh, saudari mariana yeah, who is also here mashallah thank you mariana for attending and allowing me to share uh, how she looks at the concept of heroes amongst young malay children and she's looking at children as young as 4 years old i think this is the youngest yet yeah that that we got because we want to see as young as four what are the sort of attributes that they 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 regard as important in heroes yeah because you know the malay proverb melentur buluh biar dari rebung yeah so we want to really see uh, what are the sort of attributes that these young malay children regard as important in their heroes yeah okay so this uh, three this sharing today is based on my research that i did about a decade ago and also the follow up research done by this uh, three wonderful young uh, masai and i must say women research Yes, mashallah all power to the ladies yeah women researchers who are looking at the concepts of heroes in in young malay children and their identities yeah okay so now let's look a little bit first let's have a little bit of a light theory very light theory yeah light this is just ringan-ringan saja yeah it's not lontong it's not rendang it's just very light uh, touch into the concept of heroes yeah uh when we talk about heroes that the concept that actually we want to devil with is this this self actualization concept yeah it's become such an important field of research because uh there is a growing discussion on heroism that can be seen as a form of expression for self actualization and uh us here who are teachers we are very familiar with maslow's hierarchy of needs and this concept of self actualization this is actually the highest level of the psychological development where a children can uh, you know fully realize their potential so there is actually a connection between you know heroism and self actualization and there's a lot of discussion of course on how the understanding of heroism is important because when you see somebody as a hero you see them as you know the 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 model of human greatness so it would be so important for our children our young malay children to fully Uh, understand or on acknowledge or see who they who are their heroes and whether they can self actualize this this concept of greatness that they see in their heroes within themselves yeah so um these are concepts of heroes that are you know being discussed and um in in the work that is being done by all the students that you uh, i mentioned just now yeah farah aina nur ain mariana they also discuss 
the the theory yeah um that is brought uh that is that is being this that that was brought up by uh, Bronfen Brenner yeah this this theory of um you know how child development is ecological theory how child development is really a very complex set of relations if you look at this particular diagram yeah, you will see that the the innermost system yeah the micro system of the child yeah where they, it is their family, it is their neighborhood, their peers. This microsystem of theirs is the most influential level uh, in the ecological system theory. That means that the people within their closest, you know, their closest um, knit system, that is the, the, the level that is most influential to our children. Yeah. Therefore, it, it, it shouldn't surprise us. Yeah. If when we ask children who their heroes are, it will tend to be something who are someone who is immediate to them, their family members, their peers, because this is their microsystem. And then when we ask them question about who is the Malay hero, and then we see that it then expands into the macro system, yeah, where where it's the wider cultural context. It comes from that far, the wider uh, the, the wider cultural context. Of course, the challenge here becomes that whether or not the values that they see within the people inside their micro system is it um, you know is it in line with what they see in the macro Macrosystem, or is there something in the macro system, the people that they see in their macro system that they want to regard as their heroes, but it's not personified in the values of the people inside the micro system. So all these sort of like synergies and relations between the different people in their levels uh, are so important to look at. Yeah, and, and these are things that the three young researchers that, that I, I, I put up just now, they look into this and they study yeah, the, the effect of the, the various um, systems in uh, the ecological systems theory that affects the young child. Yeah? Uh, also, they look at uh, Bandura's yeah, theory of uh, social learning. Yeah? So you can see here uh, in, in Bandura's theory, he looks, he says that children can actually learn from people who are uh, li a life model that means they actually can be influenced by actual individual they can also be in influenced by symbolic or fictional characters or also influenced by a verbal instructional model or explanations that are given to them about a certain person so <coughs> according to bandura yeah, children will actually associate themselves children do associate themselves with key figures that they see as their heroes and children will imitate role models now this can be you know challenging and problematic for us because if we do not have good role models if we do not have good heroes that portray desirable and positive behaviors siapa yang kanak -kanak kita ikut? who will they follow yeah who are their role models yeah so this is a question that is you know very interesting to ask and of course to probe into yeah now um Prof. Adija Rahmat, yeah, in, when I was doing my, my, my research, yeah, of course, I, I looked at Prof. Adija Rahmat and what she looked at in terms of the, the heroes in Sastra Kanakana. Yeah. So in her work, yeah, she looked at how the hero serves as historical ideals of life. And within Malay literature, the hero is usually people who are satria, pahlawan, pendeka. Yeah, pejuang, yeah, uh, Sri Kandi. Yeah. So these are the references to heroes that are made. Yeah, and an analysis of the literature, uh, the children's literature, also shows that often such feudal personalities are highlighted as heroes, and they are presented as the ideal, who who are excellent, who are praiseworthy. Yeah, for example, Hang Tuah. You know, his utter loyalty to the Sultan is usually considered by children's literature writers as positive and noble. Yeah, for, so for young readers, that is what they are exposed to. Yeah, that is Hang Tua ha, has complete and utter loyalty. That is a noble value. Yeah, uh, and then of course we have uh, Prof Sharudin Ma'roof. Yeah, the, the the person who actually ignited this this light in me to want to look further in his uh, discussion of the concept of hero in Malay society. Of course, he criticized the the problem of the backward elites. Yeah, and uh, the the issue of uh, Malay feudalism. Yeah, being the origin of this backward Malay elite. Yeah, and how feudal heroes. Who are celebrated were actually only busy with non-constructive activities, yeah, such as you know, uh, interest in martial arts, black magic, and things like that. So, so will will there be uh, you know a problem when feudal heroes such as Hang Tuah are glorified by the Malay elite as community heroes? Yeah, because if so, then again it goes back to who then can we consider to be the role model for the Malay students here for the Malay children? Yeah. Now, um, I wanted to, to surface this, this, this study. Yeah. This is, uh, I thought, an interesting study by Bland in 2019. Yeah. This particular uh, psychologist, yeah, he is, uh, he's, he's looking into how the traits, that, uh, we, the traits that people see in heroes 
actually self-actualize in Maslow's uh, hierarchy of needs. Yeah? So, for example, if people were to see the, or consider the traits of humility, for example, in their heroes, the, self-actualiz- the self-actualization in themselves is actually that they will be self-compassionate. Yeah? If they see courage, yeah, for example, courage, and they see that, that uh, sacrifice to transcend mediocrity, that means they really want to be you know, the best, you, also, you actually see that there is a self-actualization in terms of being spontaneous being brave, being resistant. Yeah? Uh, so the, there is uh, a link yeah, between heroism and the expression of self-actualization uh, in people. Yeah? So uh, this, I think, is an interesting study. If you, uh, those of you who are here or who are listening in later on, if you are keen to look into heroism and self-actualization, I think a blend study is definitely uh, very, very interesting to look at. Yeah? Now, uh, the choice of heroes amongst um, Malay children, of course, allows them to self-actualize the greatest potential within themselves. It yeah, gives them motivation to achieve their ambitions. The problems that me and my students think about is, what if they don't have any heroes at all? What if our, our children say, tak ada hero? I don't have a hero or I, I don't know who I would consider a hero. Yeah? So if they don't consider anybody in Malay literature or Malay society as heroes or Worse, if they have heroes, but heroes who don't have positive or progressive values. Now, this would be problematic, of course, uh, for us. Yeah. So, what are some significant findings? Yeah, that uh, my students and me have explored or have found out. Yeah, from the research that we have done. Yeah. Now, um, maybe I will share first here the findings that I have uh, gotten based on my study, which is on my study here, which is uh, students top Malay community uh, heroes, yeah? Uh, Heroes of the Malay community by Malay children, yeah? So if you see here, making the top four is Mr. Fandi Ahmad, yeah? Fandi Ahmad here, he was named by so many children, uh, so many of the youths that I met then, yeah? As one of the top heroes of the Malay community, yeah? He was named as one of the top heroes of the Malay community, yeah? And the reasons they gave, yeah, for choosing Fandi Ahmad, uh, who is the Singaporean footballer, for those of us here who do not know Fandi Ahmad, yeah, I mean, we, a lot of us here are, of, of course, fans of him, yeah, aging very well, still very handsome at his age, mashallah. Uh, a lot of the reasons they're given yeah, for why they chose Fandi Ahmad yeah, as, as a hero of the Malay community of Singapore was that he chased after his dream, you know, he led his team to success, and he puts Malays in the spotlight, you know, he makes Malays so terkenal, you know, that means, like, when people talk about Soccer, Singapore, they, well, the name of Fandi Ahmad will not live, will definitely be on their lips. Yeah? So Fandi Ahmad was named by them as one of the top heroes of the Malay community. Yeah? Uh, interest, interestingly, after Fandi Ahmad number five, which I didn't include here at that point, uh, was actually Taufik Batisa. Taufik Batisa as a hero of the Malay community. Yeah, that, can you imagine yeah, children saying that you know they, they do consider Taufik Batisa himself as a hero of the Malay community? Yeah, mashallah. Yeah. Now <coughs> we see the the third the third ranking, yeah. The third ranking top hero is yeah, the next one here, yeah. Badang. Yeah. So there's a jump from naming Fandi Ahmad, and then they go into saying Badang. Badang is one character whom they actually feel is uh, a hero in the Malay community. And they say that um, Badang is strong, Badang is helpful, yeah? and Badang is apparently a story that they were well exposed to. Yeah, the youth were well exposed to. So uh, a number of them actually said Badang as one of their heroes. They consider to be a hero in the Malay community. Yeah? So his strength and um, his helpfulness to them, yeah? they consider Badang to be a hero in the Malay community. Yeah? And then uh, the, second, yeah, the, the second ranking hero amongst the Malay community as named by the Malay children is Mr. Lee Kuan Yew. Yeah, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew. They actually named Mr. Lee Kuan Yew uh, the first Prime Minister of Singapore. And the reason they gave was his contribution to Singapore community, termasuklah orang-orang Melayu. So for them, like Mr. Lee Kuan Yew and his contribution to the Singapore society, including to the Malay community, makes him worthy of being called a hero of the Malay community. 
Yeah. So uh, now we have the the you know the second, uh, third and fourth ranking here. You have Fandi Ahmad, you have Padang, you have Mr Lee Kuan Yew, and the most top ranking name, the the highest name, top hero of the Malay community. Maybe uh, if I could get your guesses, yeah, would anybody like to venture a guess in the chat? Yeah, you could. You I think you could say something in the chat. Are they allowed to chat here? Yeah, in the chat. Maybe if you could, um. If you could state, who do you think is the top hero of the Malay community as named by Malay children? Um, please. Piramli, Upin Ipin. MashaAllah. Yeah. Upin Ipin is a good one. Betul-betul-betul, yeah. Upin Ipin, yeah. Yusuf Ishaq. Upin Ipin. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, thank you for sharing, boy, 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 yeah, boy, 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 yeah. Hmm. Yes, boy, boy, boy. Yes, interesting. Now, um, when asked, yeah, I don't know whether you all are also struggling to think of the hero of the Malay community, but when asked, yeah, the students say that the top hero of the Malay community. Actually, one of you got the right answer here, yeah. Uh, Kalau ada hadiah, ada kasih hadiah ya kepada Hazwan saya rasa ya. Cik Hazwan, nanti jangan lupa collect hadiah tingkat dua tepi tangga. Ya. Uh, Yusuf Isha, correct. Ya, the answer is Yusuf Isha. Ya, they actually named ya, Yusuf Isha as the hero, the top hero of the Malay community. Uh, and they said that it was because they were proud that he was the first president of Singapore and he was clever, he was hardworking and he was, you know, chosen as the first president of Singapore. So these Malay children considered him yeah, to be, um, you know, a, a worthy a worthy uh, person as named as the hero of the Malay community. Yeah, so uh, certainly uh, Yusuf Isha was the one that they they uh, they they consider. Yeah, Ain, Ain, you are saying Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. They they chose Allah to be the hero. Uh, actually, amongst the amongst the Malay children, yeah, religious religious people whom they chose did include Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but not many of them named uh, the Prophet. Yeah, uh, they did. Uh, they did certainly name some of their ustas and ustazas, but uh, these were not amongst the top, of course, heroes of the Malay community as named by the Malay children. So these four, these four uh, of them, uh, you know, were considered top heroes. Yeah, uh, Cik Risunawan, President Halima nombor enam agaknya. Agaknya lah, kalau kita buat sekarang, maybe President Halima might climb up the ranks. Yeah, Cik Ris. Yeah, Masya Allah. Yeah, uh, but certainly it would be interesting. Yeah, if we were to do a study now of the heroes in the Malay community. I wonder what would be the responses, yeah? Even kids now know the face of money. Yes, they know the face of money is Yusuf Isha. And the face of money on the duit raya yeah, is all the Yusuf Isha. I say, mashallah. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, let's see. Uh, let me share now. Um, personal heroes yeah so just now we were talking about um uh, malay heroes in 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 the community yeah but who then do the malay children consider to be personal heroes yeah uh, now again please feel free to share in the chat who do you think that children will consider as personal heroes yeah personal heroes that means you know heroes that they would consider important to themselves in their personal realm yeah who would they consider yeah um if I were to share with you, yeah, uh, the very first, yeah, the, the highest ranking, or if you would like to venture a guess, and yes, uh, Saudari Nur El Huda Jaffa, yeah, you are right. The first, the first highest, most uh, mentioned personal hero for Malay children is actually their parents. Their parents, yeah. So in my study 10 years ago, and in the studies that were being done by my students currently, parents are named as our students' personal heroes, as our children's personal heroes. Yeah, and uh, interestingly enough, the mother ranks higher than the father. Yeah, the ibu is mentioned many more times than the father. Yeah, but parents are mentioned nonetheless. But uh, the ranking of the mother is higher than the father. Mashallah. Yeah, and I mean, if we we were to ask ourselves, I mean, if you were to ask me now, also, I I would say that my parents are also my personal heroes. Eh? Ibu Abah, if you are listening in, Mashallah, they are of course my my personal heroes. Eh? because they are sacrifices for us. Yeah, so even our children at their young age have this realization that their parents sacrifice for them is something that they consider heroic. Yeah, so this this to me 
uh, is very um, you know telling yeah of the ability of our young Malay children to actually uh, be very appreciative of sacrifices made by their parents yeah and actually when when another interesting thing about about this was if um, if I were to go back yeah to my question when I asked when I asked it 10 years ago although some of my children some of the children that that I asked the question who are your personal heroes they might have have come from um, you know like uh, families which were you know uh, had problems challenges that they faced problems and challenges but some of them still named their parents who you know may sometimes have been abusive you know may sometimes have been have had problems they still would name their parents as their personal heroes because they choose to see the good that their parents you know did for them so this impact yeah, of parents on on children is mashallah tremendous yeah it's tremendous yeah so they actually our, our Malay children actually see their parents yeah, as uh, personal heroes. Yeah? A lot of them see their parents as personal heroes. Now, uh, the, next, the next group, yeah, mashallah, yeah, teachers. And I'm not just saying this because I'm a teacher. Tidak. Yeah, it's not, I'm not just saying this. These are, this are what the kids say. Yeah? Teachers are considered personal heroes yeah, by, by the Malay children. Cikgu, cikgu, not just, not just cikgu, but, but teachers, yeah, teachers in general, yeah, they, they consider their teachers as personal heroes. And part of the reasons they gave was the knowledge that the teachers uh, impart onto them yeah, and how they appreciate their teachers' effort in educating them. So even 10 years ago and now, we still hear teachers uh, making it up there as personal heroes named by Malay children. And this, of course, uh, makes us realize that all of us here who are teachers and educators, how impactful we are and how important the role we play as role models. Yeah, as role models. So, you know, it's not just about how we are with them in the classroom. When you are seen as a role model, yeah, then you have to be able to, you know, live up to this, uh, you know, this, this, this pedestal uh, or, you know, this angkapan that the students have of you, you know, of your kindness, yeah, of your ability to impart knowledge, you know, at all times. Yeah? So, uh, teachers who are here, uh, mashallah, you are looked up to as a hero by our Malay children. Yeah? So, so uh, remember that and continue to be inspired to do good, yeah, inshallah. Yeah? Spider-Man. <laughs> Yeah. Now, after parents, teachers, uh, I, I, I write here Spider Man because this guy made it in 2011 and is still making it today. Yeah, in 2019 and 2022. Yeah, he he never left the scene. Yeah, he never left the scene. Now, in 2011, they still named him as a personal hero, and still now, Spider Man is con still considered by our children to be a personal hero. Yeah, because. Uh, I, I guess he's. I guess you know the branding stood the test of time. Yeah, Spider Man is is still considered to be a, a personal hero. Yeah, so uh, Spider Man is under Marvel. I think so. Marvel did a good job. Yeah, mashallah. Then we have athletes. Yeah, just now I think somebody mentioned the Sea Games. I think Cikgu Hasni Dadaw. You mentioned that you know maybe now if you ask, uh, we would have athletes. Yes, in 2011 too. In 2011 they named athletes, and in fact in 2019-2022 when the when the Paralympics was happening, they named Paralympians as heroes, yeah, as people who inspired them yeah, to pursue their dreams. Yeah? So uh, our children are well aware and the impact of, of sportsmen yeah, on our Malay children is great. They do consider these sportsmen as their personal heroes. I saw some names just now of maybe now it's Iksan Fandi. Yes, children, and Anak Fandi, yeah, his, his children are now considered also to be personal heroes yeah, by the Malay children. Yeah? Now, we also have English movie characters. Yeah, uh, I compare this to 2011. Yeah, uh, in 2011 we had this person called Chichak Man. Um, I don't know whether you have seen the movie. If you haven't seen the movie, good for you. Yeah, but in 2011, uh, this Chichak Man character, this Malay movie character, and actually quite a lot of other uh, Malay movie characters were named by children as their personal heroes. But when my students did the study now. There were very, I think there was none, no Malay movie characters named by any children as uh, their personal heroes, which I don't know whether it means yeah, that, you know, the impact of Malay movies or Malay, you know, Malay uh, characters, Malay movie characters 
um, you know, is not there on our students or the exposure to to English movies is so wide, you know. So they can name people like Black Panther, uh, Elsa, Wonder Woman, and all these English movie characters as their personal heroes, but very few or almost none of them mention any Malay movie characters uh, or any, you know, Malay TV characters as, as their heroes, yeah? So uh, maybe it is it is time, you know, for, for us to come up with a, with a really solid, uh, I don't know, Malay superhero character that is better than Chichak Man or Kluang Man or I don't know what man that is, yeah? But but time to come up with something, yeah? Um, and uh, interestingly, interestingly also, uh, in the most recent studies, scientists, scientists, and their contribution uh, to the you know to the society uh, have resulted in them being named as personal heroes by the Malay children. Yeah, so you can see the appreciation yeah for the current context of contribution of scientists to the society. Yeah, so our Malay children have this kesedaran, have this consciousness. Yeah, that the scientists' contribution is something that they would they would consider to be heroic. Yeah, so this, uh, this, uh, you know, this is me trying to share with you all how personal heroes, you know, within the Malay children are really shaped by the context that, that they're in, are really shaped by, you know, the, the system, uh, the, the closest people around them. Yeah, so if we can see here the traits of heroes, yeah, now this one is uh, something that I specifically ask, yeah, what are the traits of the heroes that you consider to be important? So you can see here that. Um, about 83% of, of uh, children yeah, actually chose their heroes based on personality and not really physical. Yeah? So personality wins, yeah? being hardworking, being clever, kind, yeah? being helpful, brave, yeah? uh, confident. These are personality traits that they consider to be important and less important are physical traits. Yeah? Physical traits such as being gaga, good looking, handsome, uh, all that. Uh, mentioned, but not as important as personality traits. Yeah, so this uh, also shows us, um, you know, the 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 perwatakan of, of of the Malay children that we have. Yeah, their ability to discern the importance of person personality. Yeah, now then we also have um, the impact. Yeah, the impact of heroes on Malay children. Yeah, um, Nur Nurfara Aina study. Yeah, so uh, Aina actually found that Malay children relate their ambitions to their heroes. Yeah, she had a, a, a girl, a little girl who said, my hero is my Ustaza, mashallah. I also want to be Ustaza when I grow up. Yeah, so they relate very closely their ambitions to their heroes. Yeah, so we cannot take too lightly yeah, this, this notion of, uh, you know, having heroes and role, mo role models because that is what they relate their ambition to be. Yeah, they may or may not be an Ustaza in the future, of course, but in a sense, it gives a gambaran, it gives a role model of, you know, the direction that they want to strive towards, yeah. Um, another finding here by Farahina, Malay children who name their parents as personal heroes, they do take concrete steps to follow their parents' footsteps, yeah. That means when they start to name, yeah, the people closest to them as heroes, they really try and live up to this, yeah. And this particular, um, this particular child that she asked, yeah, uh, said, I love running. My father used to be national sprinter. He is my hero. If I'm in a race, I will be like him. I will help someone who is injured. So we see here, it's it's in trying to copy the values. Yeah, the values of, of the father who is, you know, not just a hero per se, not just a sprinter, but a kind person. Yeah, so, uh, you know, there is that notion of, you know, they are always going to try and emulate yeah, yeah, the people whom they consider to be personal heroes. Yeah, so it makes us think also, you know, about Malay children who, uh, you know, may not have such um, uh, incredibly positive, uh, valued uh, personal hero. Yeah, how will they? That what will they then strive to to be? You know, what will they? What sort of steps will they then uh, start to take? Yeah, now um, by Ain, yeah. Nurul Ain, yeah. As Malay children get older, their basis of choice of heroes change from being just for physical traits to personality traits. Yeah. So, uh, she quoted Danish, yeah, twelve years old, whose hero used to be Spider Man because he can shoot webs out of his hand. Now his hero is uh, still fictional Naruto, but because he has brains and he can come up with ways to save the world. So there is a change in you know the 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 choice. 
of heroes on the basis of choice of their heroes. Yeah. So as they get older, the children who are older, even uh, that means even the children whom I met here yeah, when they were in secondary school, they did choose based on personality traits as opposed to just physicality. Yeah. And uh, Mariana, yeah, the, the most current one, and which we are still uh, doing the research on, yeah, heroes instill compassion in Malay children, and they are actually willing to forgive and give their heroes a second chance if heroes became bad people. I think Mariana asked a very interesting question because heroes are also imperfect. Yeah, Heroes also make mistakes. So she asked this question of the children. What if your hero made a mistake? Yeah, uh, Would they? Would you then consider them to still be your heroes or would you want to name someone else? But most of the children would say, uh, I would forgive their heroes. I would give them a second chance Yeah, because you know uh, everybody makes mistakes and things like that. So they do instill this sort of compassion in children who are willing to give you know second chances yeah and and not be too quick yeah to actually judge people yeah so it's so important yeah to to study this concept of heroes uh, amongst our children yeah now uh next we we're going to have a look at the implications yeah the implications of of this the studies and the findings yeah Firstly, the importance, and this was mentioned by Dr. Azhar just now, yeah, uh, for parents who are here, yeah, the importance of creating awareness among parents on the major role that you play in Malay children's choices of heroes. Our children's early exposure to personalities that they consider as heroes is largely dependent on the parents. Yeah? So children who could name certain heroes, it's because their parents exposed them to that hero. Their parents introduced them to that person as a hero. Yeah, so it is so important that Malay children have Malay parents have serious conversations at times about their children, uh, to, with their children about positive role models, yeah, so that our children can self actualize. Yeah, so it is so important to have this kind of conversations, like what are the values that we see good in this particular person, and how you know that this person could you know could be someone that we could consider to be a role model. So this talk is so important. This awareness amongst parents is so important. Yeah. The next uh, implication here, the highlighting the everyday hero. Yeah. Now, uh, I think it's important for us to note that Malay children, they don't necessarily consider lofty acts ataupun, you know, like perkara-perkara besar nak kena save from a, save from a bullet train. You, know, you, need to, you need to, you know, uh, do something big and heroic before you are considered hero. No. Instead, uh, the everyday hero, the humans who sacrifice time to help and save others, uh, these are the everyday heroes that our children uh, should actually be, you know, like um, exposed to and be told of the values, you know, that the everyday hero can bring and that they can learn from. Yeah? So highlighting the everyday hero is so important. Yeah? The nilai-nilai, the, the values that the everyday hero brings. Yeah? Um, the next implication, eh? effort at the macro system level, yeah? the level of cultural context, the wider cultural context, do need to focus on the children's microsystem. When we talk about heroes who have an impact on Malay children and their learning identities, these, these, these heroes usually exist within the microsystem, within the proximity of their, of their system, their family members, their teachers. But this, this means that the children can see how the achievements of those people who are close to them are achievable in their real life context because the cut right so you can see oh so if my parent can do this you know inshallah i can do this also you know if my um, ustaza can do this yes i can do this but if we want them if we are serious yeah, about them having uh, role models who you know achieve huge things for the society you know heroes in the wider context of the Malay society then we need to put to ensure that this there is a concerted effort yeah to try and highlight these uh, heroes in the macro system um within within the children's uh, micro system in itself that means that there is some sort of link that we make here yeah, from the heroes within their their vicinity the values that the heroes that they consider to be personal have and the heroes that we want them to see in the macro system yeah so if we want them to see for example people in the wider cultural context as having certain values that are heroic then we need to link that up with this value is similar to what your parents have but look at their contribution to the wider society for example that means making that sort of realization for the children that eh, yes just like how my parents sacrificed this person has also sacrificed for the Malay society and the larger community yeah that means making that sort of a link because sometimes I think what we tend to do is we are quite 
I won't say disorganized, but we, we, we don't quite see the synergy and the link. So we are doing a lot of things like, you know, like in boxes, this person, we highlight as a hero, this person is a hero, but not really considering what is the relevance to the kids. How do the kids find this person, you know, worthy of being called a hero? Because what are the values of this person that, that is actually, you know, to this kid relevant, you know, or attainable to them in their real life context. So I think it's important to make that link, yeah, so that, you know, kids don't just find that, you know, it's just talk, yeah. Okay. And uh, the, the, the final implication that I wanted to state here is the search for the Malay hero still continues, yeah. You know, while the older Malay children in 2011 could name icons that they learned through textbooks, yeah, they could name Yusuf Ishak, Lali Kuan Yu, like they could name people that they see in the media as heroes. The relatability of such personalities on young children that we see now is actually quite minimal. Yeah, it's actually quite minimal. So there is this search that needs to continue for the Malay hero. Yeah, I welcome uh, the young ones here uh, who are, you know, uh, curious enough or, you know, who would want to do embark on this research to actually see who do the Malay youths right now consider to be as heroes of the, of the Malay society. Yeah. Now, um, A summary, yeah. Um, Malay children do have heroes, yeah. Yeah, hooray, hip hip hooray, yeah. We this was one of my of the the worries at the beginning. Remember, because when I speak to my students, the worry is, macam mana kalau ada hero? How? There's if there is no hero, what are we gonna do? Yeah, but Malay children do have heroes, and their personal heroes do have positive, progressive, modern values, yeah. But the personal heroes tend to be people who are just close to them just within their microsystem. And they really cannot name anybody in the Malay literature, Malay society, Malay community as heroes. Yeah, they really cannot name anyone that they would consider to be heroes. So this in itself is something that we need to think about, work on, you know, look into, yeah, uh, because of the importance of having good role models in society, which our students can, which our children can self-actualize their potential. Yeah, so uh, I think that is still work to be done of course and you know we know that as their personal heroes as their teachers yeah as their parents we have such an impact on them and we can help them to think about who are these people who are considered role models yeah mashallah even in the in the presence today yeah, in in today's talk there are so many people in this chat that i would say mashallah as as heroes yeah uh, I see, uh, I mean, uh, we have uh, Prof. Hadija Rahmat, mashallah. We have uh, Dr. Nosharil here. We have Cik Gusa Zali. We have uh, Cik Risu Nawan, mashallah. All these people are such heroic endeavors. Cik Gua Asnida, yeah. Oh, mashallah, my husband is here. Yes, you are my personal hero, Farizal Fajari, yes. So, uh, you know, we have such people in our midst, yeah, who are, you know, who are worthy of us highlighting as uh, role models. So let's do it. Let's make sure that our children know who these people are so they don't just start naming Black Panther, yeah, start naming Elsa, so that they know who are the people that they can consider to be personal heroes and also possibly a hero for the Malay community. Yeah, um, I, of course, have. Uh, I would like to thank everyone for, for joining in today. Of course, there is a reading list that you can, you know, um, you know, if you're interested to, you can look at the recording again and, you know, have a read at all these reading lists. But other than that, uh, thank you so much for attending today and I hope you have uh, enjoyed the talk, mashallah. Thank you so much. Yes, indeed, uh, Dr. Rosa. I think um, your energy, yeah, really... Um, <laughs> emanates and you know and give us this uh, strong spirit in this uh, early morning saturday and um, and more so the topic that you have um, shared with us are very interesting ones mm -hmm. um very useful indeed yeah i i hope uh, um, we have librarians listening to us to educationists listening to us to parents listening to us to and those researchers yeah uh, and your conclusion is quite interesting, right? On the one hand, you know, you see that positive part, yeah? But on the other hand, you also see that that micro, uh, what you call it, the, the micro system, yeah? The, 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 the children are within in that micro system that they are not able to go beyond that, right? Beyond their own uh, zone, yeah? Zone of what they are familiar with. Yeah? All right. Um, we should open this for Q&A, all right? Yes, um, um, I have maybe... a question here. Uh, uh -uh. Yeah. 
So I have a question here from from Dr. Nosharil. Yeah, thank okay. you, Dr. Nosharil, for your good. question. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. So. Uh, I see the question here. Uh, the first one is how big was the sample for the surveys done mm-hmm. in 2011 and 2019? So I will take you back to that first few slides where we show exactly yeah. how many people were, 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 how many children were surveyed. Uh-huh. Question number two is to what extent do religious teachers feature in Young's concept of hero? Are they part of teachers category it's or really, yeah. uh-huh. were they named as public ulama? Actually, the students can, dif- they actually differentiate between mm-hmm. teachers and ustazah and ustaz. Yeah. So this Cikgu Cikgu and Ustaz, is yeah. different. Uh, they yeah. see it as, as very different, yeah? yeah. So, um, could they name any public ulama? No, they could not. They could not name any public ulama amongst the, amongst the, you know, in relig- religious, uh, religion wise, they could only name Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay. Yeah, they they could not name any uh, Ustaz or you know, um, Ustazah, you know, as, yeah. a, aside from their own Ustaz and Ustazah. Yeah. Public ulama, no. Uh, mm-hmm. Apart from parents and Hollywood, do you think that TV, social media shape their choices of hero? Of course, certainly. Yeah, um, you know, social media, uh, TV, especially our children right now. Yeah, they're, they're kind of exposure from young. Yeah, to mm-hmm. things to people who they see on YouTube. Yeah, for example. Yeah, I don't know how many hours my my children spend watching people like Ryan. This this is a YouTuber called you know this 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 little boy called Ryan. Yeah, he does Ryan's toy review. Yeah, and he reviews toys. Yeah, and they know this name of Ryan because every single day they are exposed to this, this particular kid who is just reviewing toys on YouTube. Mm-hmm. So this exposure yeah, to, to people on YouTube who are constantly, constantly on in their eyes and constantly you know being watched certainly does uh, impact yeah, um, the, the children and their choices. Yeah. Uh, what does this say about social interaction in society? Yeah, certainly now the impact of social media means that our children are you know definitely more exposed exposed to people who are you know not just uh, people that they meet but people that they see on screen and they are affected by the values that those people uh, you know bring with them yeah so that is my answer for you Dr. Nosharil and I also want to bring you to that first um, to the first uh, ever slide the one that mentioned about how many people there are yeah? uh, just empirical allow data, me yeah? yeah the empirical data yeah of course um, with the understanding yeah that this particular uh, this particular um, this particular study that is done by my students, they are done for their educational research. And of course, they are limited in terms of, mashallah, in terms of what they are allowed to do. Uh, I'm trying to get it back. Yeah? What they are allowed, how, how big they are allowed to do. Lah. So that is one thing uh, that is a constraint. Yeah, huh? Okay, just give me a minute. Let me go back to that slide. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, this one. Uh, okay, I want to go to this this one. Okay, here. I, I don't know whether you can see this. Oh, still can't. Okay, I'm trying to go back here. Yeah? Mashallah, so sorry. Yeah? Maybe you have to do manually. Is it? Yeah, yeah, I have to do manually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. now, manually okay, coming here. Now, mm-hmm. uh, so Dr. Nosharil, in 2011, I got uh, 80. 86, 86 secondary school students. So there were 86 of them. Yeah. And my students currently in uh, total, Aina only managed to see 12. Uh, Ain managed to see 12 and uh, Mariana managed to see 16. Yeah. Because for them, of course, the constraint is the amount of time they have. I think they only have one or two months to, to complete their, their, you know, their actual data collection. Yeah. So of course, all this is work in progress and the data that is collected has, of course, to be expanded. Yeah. And of course, the findings that we have. Uh, it's not uh, repre- it's not fully representative, but certainly an indication. Yeah, mm-hmm. so definitely something that we can explore further. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Nosharil, for that for that question. Uh, yeah, yeah, Rosa, if, mm. if before you uh, answer to uh, mm. those questions, yeah, yeah. Uh, what about the socio economic background of the of the student concern? You know, these young people, right? Mm. Uh, do they uh, do you have like a data, like for example, your for your case, right, in twenty eleven, mm. right? Yes. I mean, uh, you know, uh, maybe, I don't know, this is a speculation. Mm. Uh, a middle class family, right? With mm. more resources, you know, would mm. that be having a different way of looking at who are their heroes as yes. compared to, let's say, you know, a working class uh-huh. uh, family? Would I, that be a consideration to think? I think it would be a consideration, certainly, Dr. Azza. The students that I taught 
in secondary school, I was teaching over at uh, Queenstown Secondary. Yeah, so mm-hmm. most of them came from the daerah of Cape Mera, Commonwealth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know uh, that that particular area. Yeah, and uh, certainly they they come from you know the working class. Some of them very difficult backgrounds. Yeah, but as I mentioned just now, even kids from very difficult backgrounds with families who are maybe broken. Yeah, they still would name parents as their heroes. Yeah, despite you know like. You know, for us, maybe we would think like, how can you possibly consider this person who has done an and un- just an unjust unjustifiable damage to you? For example, like you know, they have abused, they have been abused, that kind of thing. How would you still consider them a hero? But they can still see the good. They can still see the good and the sacrifice that you know their parents or their family have done for them, and they choose to see that. You know, they choose to see that. So sometimes, actually, for me, it was an eye opener in terms of our kids. Uh, sense of you know uh, love, absolute love for their parents, and how how much more important is it for us to educate the parents, yeah, on how they have to you know uh, do good to their children, yeah. So certainly, yeah. in terms of uh, the the background, the socioeconomic background, it, it is definitely impactful, Dr. Azar. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Chegu Irwan uh, asking me, thank you Irwan for joining me. Aside from personal heroes, wouldn't our children's heroes just be a result of pedagogical indoctrination? <laughs> pedagogical indoctrination. Perkataan ya, indoctrination ya. Well, certainly, uh, Cikgu Irwan ya, whatever is being being plated and served to them, yeah, is certainly something that they would consider. Yeah, uh, whatever appears in textbooks, whatever is being said by teachers, of course, it does impact them. Yeah, in terms of who they would choose. Yeah, to be their heroes. Yeah, so certainly that is why uh, it is important for us as educators to also teach our kids to think critically. Think critically. Yeah. So whatever is presented to them may not necessarily be someone that they would want to consider if it doesn't align with their values. Yeah. So it is something that is uh, certainly we need to discuss and you know have a good discussion with our with our students. Yeah. Uh, Cik Hazwan Muhammad. Yeah. Mashallah. Thank you so much, uh, Hazwan, for joining me. Perhaps our children can also be nurtured to aspire to become heroes themselves. Certainly, instead of necessarily looking for role models. How can we do more to instill this in our young? How can we teach them that normal everyday deeds in itself is a heroic act and is something that we inspire to? Yes. So important, yeah? Our children themselves should aspire to be heroes. Yeah, but how do we do this? How do we instill this? How do we teach them? Well, I can only say that knowing the impact of parents, knowing the impact of teachers, yeah, this is, you know, the key the key towards us um, making sure that our children have this, you know, uh, can have this aspiration, yeah, to become heroes of the community. So definitely, uh, we need to work, yeah, with with parents, uh, with with teachers on how they can, uh, you know, like talk about every day, talk about, you know, the importance of good values, the importance of serving the community. So it's all in the everyday effort, uh, Cik Azwan, yeah? it's, it's all in the effort by everybody. It takes a village, yeah? Uh, Cik Yaakob, how do you think children decide on who is a hero and who is not? MashaAllah, how do they decide on who is a hero and who is not? I guess it is when the hero aligns to their concept of what, uh, you know, what, they deem somebody who is a role model to be. Yeah? So when they consider somebody is a hero, that means that person's achievement is actually something that to them is big. To them is, you know, like, mashallah. And, and sometimes we cannot, you know, imagine why would, for example, for example, why would anybody want to consider maybe, um, you know, someone like uh, Black Panther as your hero? Why would you consider Spider-Man as your hero? But it is in the values of these people that they, you know, see these is characters that they see to be, uh, you know, so fantastic that they want to emulate. So I think that is what drives children to name certain characters as their heroes, yeah? Uh, Maybe, Rosa, I yes. think this is uh, Prof. Yaakko Ibrahim. Oh, yes. MashaAllah, Prof. Yaakko Ibrahim, <laughs> thank you so, so much. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so yeah. much for joining us, Prof. Yeah, um, I worked with Prof. Yaakko Ibrahim when I was a young kid, when I was still in, in secondary school, uh, working with Mendaki, top 10%, tak salah, and I, I remember attending, uh, you know, discussions with him at NUS, and he was my mentor, Prof. Yeah, Prof. Yaakko Ibrahim, thank you so much for joining us today, Prof. Yeah, uh, um, and 
uh, certainly, uh, I think uh, the the importance of teachers, the importance of um, parents, yeah, in 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 you know again shaping the minds the minds of the of the children, yeah. Perhaps school textbook can have notable individuals. Of of course, notable individuals in the field of Malay community that cover a spectrum of fields. Yes, perhaps indeed, yeah. Um, not uh, I, I'm going to say this, yeah. Uh, I also feel there is a lack of um, women. Women who are put in the foreground as uh, wirawati or as heroines, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, mashallah, you you can see yeah, how it how important they name they name mothers as personal heroes, yeah. They name mothers as personal heroes. So I think if we can highlight women in Malay society who notable women whom we can consider, you know, to have traits who are noble who who contribute to society. Mashallah, I have a feeling that we can, you know, build the next generation of Malay children who have an appreciation, you know, for for women who are, you know, of of great, uh, you know, who, who contribute greatly to to the society. So certainly, yeah. Yeah, there is a place. It, in yeah, indeed, Dr. Rosa, I, yeah. I think uh, this year coming SWF, yeah, a team on uh, women's writer, or we could also say, you know, cultural icon within the community. Mm. Yeah, this I think will plan or not a plan, yeah, to put forward in some of the important names within our community. Let's uh, look forward for this. Yes, sure. good idea from from you, and I I strongly support. Mashallah. All right, yes. so we have another question at the church, yeah, uh, Dr. Mm. Rosa. Yes. If you want to see? Okay. Uh, first, I think from Ch- Is- Hamid Ismail. Oh, Ch- Hamid Ismail. Mashallah. Yeah. Let me see. Right. Um. Our children. Um, now are very much exposed to films and other medias. Do yes. They do not read Malay literature. Don't you think that their heroes are merely illusional? What are mm. your thoughts on that? Okay. Uh, first of all, Pak Amit Ismail, thank you so much for attending my talk, Pak Amit. Yeah, MashaAllah. Um, I mean, Pak Amit, to me, uh, you know, like uh, I, I had the honor of having having him in my class, teaching me and my students about drama writing. Yeah, and we actually, you know, like we did some, uh, we did some, you know, like uh, casting. You know, like we tried to get into his cast for cerita cerita drama. Tapi semua Pak Amit tolak ya, tak dapat berlaku dengan baik. But Pak Amit smile, mashallah. Thank you for for attending this talk, Pak, Pak Amit. Yeah, uh, your question. Yeah, they are now very much exposed to films and other media's, but they don't read Malay literature, yeah? uh, and are their heroes merely illusional? Yeah, uh, itulah dia pak. Yeah, um, the reading, yeah, the the reading or the exposure to Malay literature, yeah, bukan tak ada. I think bukan tak ada, but I think it is uh, may, maybe our lack of uh, emphasis on the values that the characters in this Malay literature. Uh, and how they are, they can actually, you know, be relevant to our children, yeah, in terms of their lives, yeah. So, but to uh, when they watch something in the media, when you know, and it's something illusional, that means it's not real, lah, kan? It's not, it's it's all made up, yeah. It's all drama and all that. Mm-hmm. I think that, sebab you know, they they see that and then they think that it's relevant to them. Tapi bila dia baca books and all that, and no one is helping them to make that link as mm-hmm. to how the characters in this book actually yeah. have values which are worthy of being called role models I think we missed the boat there kita terlepas peluang kat situ jadi you know teachers guru-guru ya uh, parents ya when we read books to kids ya you know uh, make that explicit make it explicit how what we are reading and read Malay literature baca buku Melayu ya read and read to the children and make sure that our kids, you know, understand that even within Malay literature, Malay books, there is nilai-nilai yang baik that they can take from the characters in Malay books, and, you know, and, you know, exemplify the astral models, yeah. Thank yeah. you so much, uh, Pak Amit, for that, yeah. Okay. Uh, two new messages. Um, okay. Uh, I, think, I think I have answered all. Um, uh, in one, you have answered, I think, from P3, yeah? Uh, Fitri. Uh, oh, yeah, it's more, say, uh, yeah. I think more or less about the same, right? Yeah, about, this exposure yeah. to Malay books. Uh-huh. This exposure yeah. to Malay books. But actually, I'm happy now because, I mean, I'm a parent to to three kids, yeah? So, I'm very wary of, uh, you know, how many uh, Malay books are out there for them to read and all that. And I'm actually very happy because recently, there is actually quite a lot of Malay books coming out with the context of Singapore for children, yeah? Which I think is fantastic. And I also always urge teachers to write books, write children's books for our kids. Who else is going to write these books if not us so you know we have to you know uh, come together 
and you know of course work towards building this concept yeah. of the role model and 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 the hero yeah, yeah so thank you so much everybody for their for your questions mashallah yeah and as uh, your last point uh, uh, dr rosa i think it's important yes. you know we need to gather all our resources our expertise yeah yes you can't just uh, leave it to publisher right uh, to do this job isn't it so, right it must be a collective work right i mean expertise Certainly. from you right i mean people who are in the publishing Yes. educationists right? uh, childhood uh, educators right? experts come yes. forward and of course um grant support yeah yes right? um, i think i think grant support i think from time to time we can find yeah yes. but local institutions yeah? for example yes. maybe mendaki right and i'm sure you know uh, our uh, public libraries you know can commission yeah. works of such right and then you know, get things you know to publish uh, works that are worthy for our children uh, to read Oh, yes. we have another question here from in Prof. Yaakob. Another question. Uh, yes. Do you have a longitudinal study? Right? The children's conception of heroes change as they grow older. Yeah. Mm. And why is this? So I think this is, yeah. Yeah. So, so, this is a good question. So, uh, Prof. Yaakob, do I have a long longitudinal study? No, because the thing is that... Uh, Certainly, it is something to be embarked on, lah. This long to do the study, yeah, uh, Dr. Yeah. Azza. But as I mentioned, that uh, because uh, after my master's was done, and you know, I got into education, a lot of my work is there, yeah, with education, with um, assessment, yeah, with pedagogy. So I I had to leave this for the young ones. So what I'm doing with the current students now is they do this small scale research. And they collect data on, you know, what is uh, the concept of heroes in society amongst the Malay children. But certainly, a longitudinal study that is something fantastic that I would love to embark on, yeah, inshallah, yeah. or at least have somebody work with it on mm. me. And uh, I think definitely uh, such a study is important and can tell us a lot about how we can, you know, move forward with trying to conceptualize this concept of hero amongst the Malay children in Singapore because really the potential for self-actualization with our kids, you know, ability to, you know, they, they, are, they, are, they can be so mature in their thinking but if we don't shape it properly, kalau kita tak, you know, susun cantik-cantik, it, it's a lost opportunity sometimes, yeah? yeah. So certainly thank you for that kata-kata semangat, I would call it kata-kata semangat, eh, Prof. Yaakob, insyaAllah, uh, doakan that, you know, you know we, can, we can contribute to this area. Thank you. Yeah. Who knows, yeah, uh, one of these days, you know, we can um, uh, talk to those people who are having interest, you know, yes. people at the top who think that, you know, this uh, research agenda should be pursued, yeah? yeah? Yes. Maybe so we can chat with uh, this point later, Dr. Rosa. Uh, yes. Let's hope, you know, something that could be done. But yes. what is interesting, Dr. Rosa, such studies, not just about Malay community, it has uh, a contribution in itself eh, to the larger understanding of You're Singaporean right. youth. No? Betul, betul, I mean, you yeah, know, right. it's you know, Singaporean. I, I don't, I don't think much different. Singa- Malay yeah. youth, yeah, uh, children, much different from from the rest, right? Betul. I mean, there are some spe- specificities, but you know, their yeah, their yeah, their experiences, their yes. challenges, yeah, just like any other Singaporean children. Yeah? Correct. But so the concept of heroes amongst youths, yeah, amongst yeah, youths. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Zooming on Malay community is one way, yeah, yeah? To, yeah. to also give us insights into the larger uh, Singapore society. Correct. But what, another interesting point that you mentioned just now, it's not just about Malay literati icon or mm. cultural icon that missing in the schema, mm. but also if you look at even even Islamic tradition, yeah? yeah. For example, Ibn Khaldun, you know, you know, you know all those big names, yeah, Muslim mm. thinkers, yeah, Betul. Are, are not there, right? Yeah. Uh, even Nusantara, yeah. Mm. And this is what uh, Rosa, mm. uh, when normally I tested a student when they join mm. NUS, mm. yeah. So in class, you know, so who are your so-called mm. uh, intellectual heroes? Yeah? Yes. Yeah, hardly yes. Um, anyone mentioned from the region. Yes. And no surprise, hardly anyone mentioned uh, from the literati. Yes. Because they have put literature as something which is of the other world. <laughs> yeah. For some reason, you know? Yeah. Right, uh, and then when you keep on slowly talking to them, they're oh yeah, Masuri, oh yeah, yes. Suraman, oh yeah. Then oh yeah comes after you explain. Right. Yes. So in other words, I think it takes an effort, as you mentioned just now. We need to shape that, right? Yeah. Before you know, it, the colors become less ex- 
exciting. Yeah? Betul, correct. Yeah? yeah, certainly. So, I mean, that's the thing. Um, people who we expect they would name and they start to not name or they not know, it really worries me because, I mean, you think that the effort is concerted enough and, you know, because we're in our world, yeah, but what we realize is that from the perspective of children, all these people that we consider to be worthy of naming heroes has no relevance to them. It has, it has no, because no one has told them what is the relevance of all these people to me. So, you know, for them, uh, you know, they don't, they don't contribute to me when actually the contribution is a lot, but it is, it is making that that you know explicit link for children i think that will really help our kids as they grow so kind of like public education a kind yes. of public forum is needed you know yes. more active um, library engagement is needed yeah. right newspaper can play a role too right Certainly. in featuring you know those reading teachers Certainly. are more proactive not just uh, working on worksheet yeah but mm. also you know Buat worksheet penat Buat worksheet penat Penat sangat buat worksheet tu Amazan Sebab tu lah exactly. tak, tak ada masa yeah. nak nak berbual tentang You yeah. know hero-hero yeah, So you know? I'm not belittling the the, the, yes. the the work of teachers here Yes right? It's you know, a lot of work yeah. A lot of work A lot of work So we we need to to see You know How can we support right? Certainly How can we support right? Certainly And Masha I Allah. think this need to be You know Something that we envision As a community Yes right? Yes certainly. Uh, I, I think uh, On the one hand We need hero But working like this, no one hero can accomplish, right? Yes. We need multiple heroes, right? Yes, yes. Correct, <laughs> correct, Dr. Azza. You are so right, yeah. Fadli, is there any question from the Facebook? I think that's about it, uh, Dr. Azza. Uh-huh. I think all have yeah. been answered, yeah. Yep, yep, okay. I think uh, I think I'll just uh, take uh, Prof Hadi just comment on Facebook uh, yeah. to to possibly round it up. Yeah? So yeah, Prof yeah. is mentioning uh, it is important to do comparative studies of concept of heroes of children of other ethnic communities. Yeah. Agree, Prof. Uh-huh. And uh, Prof is saying I will also be talking about concepts of superheroes from three Asian cultures: Chinese, Indian, and Malay in an upcoming ALC outreach webinar. On oh, 7th yeah. June, oh, mashallah. All right, Chante, that's yeah? a good info, Prof. Good, yeah. Thank yeah. you so much, Prof. Hadija. Yeah, in fact, I think when Prof. Hadija, you know, conceptualized the idea of Arif Budiman. Right? Yes. I think that is also, I think, Rosa, you know very well also. Yeah. I mean, you have been you know, yes. looking at this too. Maybe next time around, Rosa, tell mm. us about um, what Prof. Hadija have conceptualized on Arif Budiman, how yeah. you see it and how you see it in the future person. This is because also yes. part and parcel of that conception of Hero too. That's true, Dr. Azza, because actually I think the the framework, the theoretical framework of Arif Budiman will very nicely allow us to see the conceptualization of heroes amongst Malay students. I think will be very cantik to use that as a theoretical uh, background yeah, when we do yeah. a, a study, a longitudinal study, for example, uh-huh. that, that Prof. Yaakob was talking about. So, mashallah, inshallah. Yeah. Let's hope that uh, you are given uh, strength, energy, I mean, I mean, imagination, creativity, criticality. And uh, let's um, put our hands together, everyone, um, to show our appreciation to thank Dr. You. Rosa. Right? Thank you, Mashallah. Rosa, thank you so much. I learned a lot uh, today. I feel like um, I, I'm more, I have more energy <laughs> this morning. And uh, thank you so much. And uh, uh, Padli, is there anything else? Yeah. Okay, uh, Rosa, maybe one last word from you. One last line, one last word as a conclusion. So as a conclusion, um, I hope that, uh, you know, based on today's sharing, everyone is more spirited, yeah, more uh, motivated, you know, because we know yeah, that our children, yeah, that their concept of heroes is there. But what we need to do as parents, as teachers, is to shape that concept of hero so that they can self-actualize and also they can find role models within the Malay society that they can emulate or they themselves can be our future Malay heroes, inshallah. I mean. Yeah. I mean, I mean. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Dr. Rosa, once again. And uh, Fadli, um, please. Okay. Uh, there's All some right. admin thing. Yeah. Yeah. Feedback okay. Thank you. Thank you both Dr. Azza and Dr. Rosalina uh, for channeling those positive vibes. Uh, definitely, like many of us who attended the, this, uh, the webinar today, I think I've also learned a lot from your webinar. Okay, now uh, everyone, we have now come to the end of the webinar. Okay, before we call it a day, I would like to bring your attention to our upcoming WWS session. In fact, I think next week at yeah, Dr. Azza, we have yes. another session. Okay, yeah. please allow me to share. Okay. We have uh, Dr. Norida Kamari. Yeah, so we have Dr. 
Okay, can everybody see? Yeah, so we have the this one, the next WWS session, the third one in 2022. So stay tuned and also follow our social media for updates on MHF programs. Okay, so we will do our publicity on LinkedIn, on uh, Facebook, and also on our YouTube channel as well. So without further ado, okay, I would like to invite everybody. Okay, you may also subscribe to our newsletter. Okay, I would like to invite everybody to scan the following QR code uh, to share with us your feedback. So maybe I'll just leave this on for a while. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I think it looks like everyone is done. Okay, I have also shared the link via the uh, via Zoom and also FB Live. Okay, so you may actually revisit the link again. Yeah. So uh, it looks like everything is done. Okay, I'd like to thank everybody for your time and also, you know, and your kind support. Okay, please remember to follow us on our social media. Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, we are now on, on Facebook, YouTube, uh, and LinkedIn. So do like and subscribe to our channel. So I think, uh, other than that, I think have a pleasant weekend, everyone. Please stay safe. On behalf of Dr. Azza and Dr. Rosalina, signing off. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and selamat hari raya.